been involved with the group uh, for over a year now uh, on various different levels. And uh, I have to say that it is so exciting to be able to be invited to speak to you today. I'm going to be sharing some ideas. And I'm also going to be talking a little bit later on how the opportunity at hand uh, is rolled out so that you can have some more details. So I'm just going to start off uh, talking about the why, because often we, we always want to know how. Now, tell me how. But it's actually the why that you've got to focus on. I mean, in South Africa right now, when you invest or you put money in any particular uh, business idea or a uh, investment portfolio, you've got to be asking why is the, what's the motivation? Why are you doing it? Is it because you want to have a long uh, uh, or a, a, a widespread portfolio? Is it because you want to have a monthly income stream? Is it because you want to in, you know, give it to your kids and give them a nice portfolio? What is it, what's the motivation behind putting your money anywhere? Now, whether it's a business, whether it's a share option, whether it's a license, which you have all purchased, um, and, you know, when I look at the returns, I go, wow, the returns are amazing. I mean, how many of you agree for the amount of money that you paid to purchase a license, the return has been phenomenal? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes? So, um, I'm just going to throw some ideas around, and, and as Kevin said, yes, I am a business owner. So, I, I look at this from a business point of view. Uh, and I look at it from a sustainability point of view, and I look at the bigger picture, and I say, where are we going? And what we're going to talk about today is so exciting because the, the visionaries behind this brand, the companies, the whole uh, portfolio and suite of companies, when you sit with them one-on-one -on -one and you listen to where they're going and the way they think, you, you've quickly realized that you want to be amongst them. Because when you mix with successful people, you pick up and you get the sniff and the ideas of success. And uh, there's a saying that, suert suk suert, you know that, birds of a feather flock together. So if you hang around with broke people, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get broke. If you hang around with sick people, you will get sick. So the same concept is, is in this environment, if you hang around with people that think differently, that think on a completely different business level, you'll start to pick up ideas, and then it's up to you to implement those ideas. About two years ago, I went to this massive seminar in Santon. There were four and a half thousand people, and I saw a handful of people taking action. You know, they wanted to buy something and grow and change. And a small percentage, maybe 2% or 3%, actually physically bought an idea or a concept or a training program. And I watched those people, every single one of them that kept on coming back to learn and grow, every one of them, their businesses changed. They added businesses to their portfolios. They started having much more success. Even their dialogue, their language started to change. Right? When you mix with successful people, they talk a different language. They're up there. Right? 99% of the time, they're positive, self-motivated people. They don't need to be pushed out of bed. They jump out of bed. Right? And decision makers are like that. Uh, I heard a saying years ago, uh, successful people make decisions quickly and change those decisions slowly. Unsuccessful people take a long time to make their mind up, and then they change it just like that. So they actually live or stay in the decision-making process. So all of you that are in the room, you made a decision to purchase a license, be it from all quotes or by direct. You've seen a dividend. Every month you get paid. So you already know this is a company of integrity. They do what they say, and now they're taking it to another level. So I'm just going to give you some background information as to almost why you'd want to go to a different level. Because yes, making some money every month is fantastic, but making a lot of money and, and, and building an asset is better. Okay, so just quickly, I'm just going to cover this. If only, uh, I'm going to talk about a concept called intentional congruence. It's a big word. Uh, I'd never heard it either until I went to America and found out how it works. And then I'm going to talk about 15 different businesses that are all creating almost the pillars of what we're going to talk about today and the offering that we have on for today. So how many of you have ever said this? If only I had done this. If only I had done that. How many of you have ever had a regret in your life? Raise your hands. Okay, some of you, no regrets. That's, that's good. I like that positive attitude, right? <laughs> if you've ever had a regret, I've got a lot of regrets. I mean, there was a girl on the beach down in, in Volfus Bay. I'm talking 27 years ago. If I just went up to her and said, hello, a year before I left, I would have known that she was dying for me to say hello to her. I didn't know. A regret. How many times people have come to me? I mean, I had a friend of mine who came to me about four and a half, five years ago, and he said, Andrew, I've got this business idea, and I'm looking for between two and 300,000 rand. That's all I need. And I looked at it, and I thought, no, nah, you know what? I don't get it. I don't see it. 
He sold his business for 180 million rand about four months ago. He offered me 50%. Now, how many of you would like to make a cool 90 million rand in four years? I mean, hello. Yeah. And I turned that down like an idiot. But I didn't see it. So sometimes opportunities, we don't always see them clearly. Um, it's like if I say, right, let's go and build another hotel next to this hotel. Some of you will say, brilliant idea. Some of you will say, no, nah, there's already a hotel here. We don't need another hotel because you don't see it in the same way. So what's been fantastic is, uh, you know, just sitting uh, in, the, in the conversation with Johan and the, the I want to call them the visionaries of this organization. I get so fired up because I can see there's a pattern and there's a pathway. So what are the patterns and pathways? So, John Paul Getty said, I'd rather have 1% effort of 100 people than 100% effort of my own. And this is a fundamental foundation to wealth. Because if you're trying to do everything yourself, in other words, you're going to make all your money on your own, guess what's going to happen? You've got 24 hours in a day, you're limited to the amount of money you can make, which means that you're going to end up okay, if you're lucky. Now, in South Africa, the number works like this, 95% of people, and I didn't make this number up. You can go to any uh, consensus, insurance company, they all have the same numbers. 95% of people by the age of 65 are either dead or broke, or both. 95%. That means 5% of people have got their oats together and can show a return, can give money to their kids when they pass on. Only 5%. Now, you have to ask yourself the question, why is it only 5%? Why is the number so low? Well, I'll tell you. We are not taught at school to do business on a grandiose scale. We're not taught that. We are taught, go and get an education, good education, so that you can get a good job, and you can work until you're 60, 65, hopefully retire with a, a turkey and a gold watch. Remember in the old days, turkey and a gold watch. That's what you got when you retired. The problem with that is, is that business has changed so dramatically that if you're not part of a group of people, forward-thinking people that have, that have forward and change, uh, or call it uh, futuristic thinking, you will always be behind because the world has become super fast. I mean, in the old days, uh, you wanted to find something, you'd have to go and find a yellow pages, page through the yellow pages. Nowadays, you're driving in your car. One hand, you have your cigarette. Your other hand, you've got your cell phone. You've got a sandwich between your knees. You're doing 10 things at one time. You just go onto Google on your phone. Within seconds, I mean, to find the venue today, how many of you used your cell phone? Raise your hands. Yeah. You type the address in, and the phone tells you where to go. You couldn't do that a few years ago. So things are changing dramatically. It's faster, it's a higher pace, it's, and there's more profit in it if you know what you're doing. So John Paul Getty, he understood one thing. He said, you've got to own the entire exchange. In other words, the full uh, process. Now, for those of you who don't know who he was, I mean, he was known as the richest American alive in 1957. His legacy still lives on. I mean, they, they, uh, he, was the, he was the fastest billionaire in his day, the fastest person to become a billionaire in, uh, in his day. And he said... Intentional congruence is the way to billionaire status. Now, often people say, what is intentional congruence? What are you talking about? I don't understand the word. Well, this is the billionaire code. The billionaires have, have learned how to connect dots. They've learned how to get one business to make money for the next business, to make money for the next business. And when you are involved in a business like that, income is almost automatic. For instance, when you go to the bank nowadays, in the old days, you just went to the bank. What else can you buy through the bank nowadays? You can get a laptop or an iPad through your bank. You can get insurance through the bank. What else can you get? Can you buy airtime at the bank? You're kidding me, really? Wow. Okay, so you can get airtime through the bank. Now, why would the bank do that? Because the bank has thousands of customers coming in every single day. So they sell and they make more money because they're an engine that makes money. And they've only cottoned on to that in the last few years. So this is what he said. When you build wealth, you have to control the entire supply line. In other words, you've got to own the trucks that deliver the oil. You've got to own the garages or the, the service stations. You've got to own the entire process, and then you can make money on every single level. You don't give your money to your competition. Okay? So in intentional congruence, I'm going to give you a few examples. I actually met this guy. I went to America uh, a, year and, a year and a bit ago. That's Dr. Nito Cobain, and he's one of the foremost specialists. 
uh, on, on intentional congruence. And he said to me, Andrew, if you want to be wealthy one day, you cannot only do one thing. You have to spread your portfolio, and you've got to be able to get different entities all feeding into the same business model. Now, believe it or not, it took me a year and a half to figure this out. I mean, I own multiple businesses, but I'd never heard of this concept before, and it didn't make sense to me when he first told me. So I'm going to give you a, a basic rundown right, on, on, on how it works. So let me give you a few examples. Think of a retailer. In the old days, we used to go into a retailer and buy our food, right? Now you go into a retailer, you can also buy clothing. So Woolies, uh, the hyper stores, you can buy clothing. You can also get medical. You go into Clicks, they've now got a pharmacy in Clicks. Right? And they're highly, highly, highly profitable because they've got you in. They didn't pay money to get you in the door. You, you went there because you wanted to go there in the first place for something else. Incidental purchase, right? They also have, this click is not working, so like, a, like you said just now, you can buy airtime. Now, what does a retailer get paid on airtime? That small percentage on every time you buy from them is money in their pocket that they didn't have before. Same number of customers but now they're selling more and more and more to you. In other words, they're using more of your disposable income. All the other money that you would ordinarily have bought, something somewhere else, is now spent with them. That's intentional congruence. You can buy an airplane ticket. You go to checkers, you can go and get your airplane ticket. You can buy theater tickets. You can, buy, you can pay your speeding fines. I hate that part because I don't like to pay them. But I mean, you can do everything at that particular, I heard you can pay your municipality bill at the retailer, can you do that? Okay, not that we do that, we just do the internet transfer and so forth. How about airports? 